First of all, thank you for having me. Um, before I start, I would like to have a talk uh, and share with you something I have uh, gone through with um, uh, in the past in my entrepreneurial life. I have started La Pain Quotidien in 2011 um, and every year was a bit the same. Uh, we had good times, bad times, uh, hard times and in, in the end, at the end of the year, you always have more or less the same thing. And I, I took some advertising space because it's my company, so I decide what to do with the money and it, I decided never to take too much salary, but to do sometimes some advertising and not really very much came out of it. But my, uh, the people I work with say, ah, you know what, it's because you don't advertise enough. And in two, 2016, I got a great year and my same clients, instead of booking one event by, by pure accident, they book five events, six events, three events, five events, and suddenly I get a great number that year and I see it coming. So I think I, I'm going all in. I'm not buying a Ferrari, I'm just going to put all in on, uh, on advertising. So I go to a, a couple of event uh, magazines and I go to a, a couple of other magazines and I take everything I hear. I, I have also a hard time to say no. Uh, so uh, every, everyone coming up say, hey, it's just a thousand, it's just a thousand five hundred, it's just two thousand five hundred, it's just... <laughs> and I say, yeah, let's rock and roll. I, I need to invest. It's the time, it's now or never, I need to invest. I think a lot of you have more or less the same thing. And what happens? Nothing. <laughs> not one client, but nothing, 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 nothing. And the next year is a bad year, or, or uh, I see my, my profit is, is nothing and I, I really invested badly. And then when you, <laughs> you call the guys selling you the advertising, ah, it's because, it's because, it's always because of something. And I said to myself, damn it, this will not happen again. And at the beginning of 2017, I make every year uh, around Christmas, I make uh, a planning for my year and I say, I will do this and that and this and that. And in 2017, just before the start of 2017, I say, I will try one year without a single euro on advertising. I will do zero. And everyone got angry because, hey, well, you, you, uh, why not? And you, you, will, you will be dead. You will be dead. In two years, you're dead. So, whoa, okay, dude, <laughs> uh, I will be dead. We will see about that. I will do zero. And I started searching because in the Christmas holidays, you mostly have a little time to, to do some research. And I found a dude called um, Jeff Bulas, an Australian guy. Um, and he, he just talked about creating and starting your blog, but in a very human, simple way, because I was, I was really a, reta a total retard in, in, the, in, in social media and blogging. In, in, I, I'm an event planner. I mean, I don't know anything about social media. I hated Facebook, by the way. I hated when there was a picture of myself on Facebook. I, I was not on Instagram, even if all my colleagues, colleagues said, you, you should be on Instagram. I was on Twitter. In, 2010, but I, I dropped it as soon as I got too much work in 2012. So in 2017, I said, hmm, I'm going to start that blog uh, because that Jeff Bulas guy had had a couple of episodes and he explained it so well. And I thought, hmm, okay, I, I, will, I will start producing some content and start writing some articles. And the guy said, because he, he knows already what you think, it is uh, the social pressure. Will it be good enough? Will it be perfect enough? And I said, uh, he, the guy said, uh, done is better than perfect. And that's a thing I will remember for the rest of my life. Just put it out. Uh, make your post and get it out. Make your blog post and put it out. But be regular and go for it. And I started blogging, creating some articles. Some worked, some didn't. And suddenly a lot of things happened. People started calling me. People started connecting. People from all the, the all corners of the world started, started saying, hey, uh, interesting what you put out there. Maybe we could have a coffee. And suddenly uh, stuff happens and then I thought because you start to follow one guy you start to follow a, a whole bunch of other guys and I started social using social media as a as a way to promote but not in the way not pushy and not silly because that doesn't work and I will share with you everything I know and everything I have learned uh, because you you're all a bit of out of the same uh, pool of <laughs> of work so I will share with you all I have <laughs> because I know it's the only thing that works uh, so we will talk about uh, these five things today um, and it starts with uh, today's realities. There are three key, uh, three key points uh, that you must know as a small uh, introduction before uh, I go further with a couple, a couple of frameworks that could be interesting for you. Um, it's the attention of the customer and the customer in the end, it's, it's people like you and me, it's, it's uh, everybody. 
the, the, the attention of everybody, even if we're, when you're sitting in the car, uh, who, when, uh, in, when in front of a red light, you won't say it, but when you're in front of a red light, who takes his phone to, to take a quick, uh, uh, a quick message? Who? I do. <laughs> or to check email quickly. Or when you're on the television, on the toilet, on the bus, and a dinner, in a, in a cafe, in a restaurant, whether you like it or not, people are constantly taking out a phone or a mobile device because everyone is on that. And even when you're watching TV and we, when you're with five watching TV, at least two or three of them are taking out their phones and are, are, are doing things with that. And if you like it or not, it just happens. And that's a reality you really need to understand because the attention is there. It's not anywhere else uh, today. And you have in the same reality, you have brands. Brands are struggling because they are putting out uh, classic advertisings because they're, because they're coached by mostly classic marketing managers who are not very, the, mo mostly not the youngest and mostly they, they, they go for the safe part because in the end they're egocentric and they want to protect their own job. So they go classic and have a classic advertising agency and they too, they go for the things that, uh, that uh, yeah, make the best money and that is advertising space and a classic media campaign and they do a classic marketing media mix and in the end sales are more or less okay and we go for it. But on the other hand, Brands know very well that they don't have the attention they want because if you're watching TV and you have the chance to fast forward uh, uh, an advertising, I don't know who of you fast forwards as soon as they can, they take the, 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 this thing <laughs> to, to, uh, to fast forward the advertising. I know I do and I know most of you do. As soon as you can, you, s you fast forward the advertising or as soon as you can and you watch a, uh, a YouTube clip and you have the little thing called uh, skip ad. Skip. And the, 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 the brands, they know, oh yeah, but we, have a, we had 7% click-through rate. But that's, that's the people with two fat fingers who, 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 who didn't, who didn't ma uh, manage to, to click skip intro and by accident they, sk they, they put uh, the, the, uh, they, they, they watch the ad. And then there's an evolution in technology. That's very important too. Evolution is going fast, is going strong, is going fast forward. And it is yeah, all much more mobile. You will have Wi-Fi everywhere. You will, you will have 5G everywhere. You will be connected constantly. It's uh, now you still have to uh, take a code and, and take the Warwick uh, code to be on the Wi-Fi on the Wi-Fi. But in a couple of months, years, it's over. You're constantly on on a perfect 4G, 5G, 7G. I don't care. But you will be constantly streaming. Your your have you seen what you had uh, with your Blackberries ten years ago, or or even with those stupid uh, Nokia phones <laughs> in the in the in the? It's not that long ago, and now we all have the perfect designed Apple things where you can watch Facebook and Instagram and everything in perfect high res quality. Imagine in five years what that will be. It will go even uh, further, and and a great evolution too. I don't know if you have a Telenet uh, decoder in your house, uh, or or a Vu or whatever. I don't know what's uh, in Wallonia. Um, when you have a Telena decoder, you can have an app on your telephone uh, and you can see your, your TV content on your telephone and uh, a certain, a certain moment you can say, I want to watch that movie. And you can choose between watching it on your telephone and, and watching it on your TV. And when you say, I want to watch it on TV, floop, it, it, it passes on your TV. So that means that everything that, is, that you can see on your phone with a little bit of technique, floop, you can swipe it on your TV. And that's something that will be uh, interesting for uh, later because Today I'm going to have uh, a lot of content marketing because in marketing it's full of bullshit, bullshit terms and bullshit things that, that really are not true. <laughs> I know it because I've tried it and it, does, and it didn't it never work. And uh, the thing is, content is king. Ah, there's a marketing manager again from a big company and he says, we're going to do content marketing because I've read it in a blog post or in, an, in a YouTube post, I've read it in a magazine, we need to do it. So now we're going to start creating content. Ah, and the classic marketing manager says, yeah, we're going to create value. We are going to do things that, that we're going to do storytelling. Yeah, and we're going to do, and what do they do? They start a blog about, uh, and every article is about uh, their new office, their new CEO, uh, the, the, the new coffee has arrived. The, 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 uh, our new product, now it's way, way cheaper than yesterday, and uh, there's a new product with new features, all things that you don't care about. Do you care about it? No. And then they say, yeah, it's not red, but we provide value, we provide value. And the only reason why they do it is because they're egocentric, because they, they only think about themselves and they think about two metrics. It is short-term sales and it is, they do a blog because it scores well on, on, uh, on their SEO ranking and their Google and they use keywords and all kinds of tricks just to trick you. But you, we, as people, we don't care. And brands are too egocentric to do this. 
and they, they, they start with too much you know, bullshit metrics that I don't uh, believe in. And then there's the another last <laughs> uh, hard marketing word, word, it's the customer centricity. We at our company, we put the customer first and they do a three-day seminar. You have, yeah, you're all event profs. How many clients did you have to do a three-day seminar about customer centricity? You know them all because you're in the back and you see the CEO and then you see the marketing manager and then you see Hubble the Pub and they all do, oh, we put the customer first and he's first and you know, oh, we care about, of course they care about them, they care about his, his wallet and his money, but never ever do they really care about him, do they ever really listen to him and do they say, um, what do you really want? What do you care about? And maybe you don't need my services, but maybe you will need something else. Uh, I've had it uh, with a client. Uh, he, he gave me a whole briefing and his targets. And I thought, but he, de he doesn't need an event. But in fact, you should say, you don't need an event. You should go around the corner and you should do this and this and that. And I think you should advise, uh, like they do in a shop when you go in New York, for example, shopping for something. And they say, ah, no, we don't have that. You won't fight that with us. But instead of saying ciao, you can say you can recommend something else and you can do something to help that client. And, and the, uh, that, that is real customer centricity, uh, putting them, uh, listening to what they really want and not just putting them on the first place, of course, just because of their, um, the fact that you want money. And if they would be very, uh, really customer centric, they would at least not give them advertisings and at least not push them uh, all their so-called content. And that's why I think at a certain moment uh, we will come to an age of the end of advertising and I cannot come to the end of advertising before I talk about the success of advertising um, because there, it's not that advertising never worked. Uh, of course it brings awareness, it brings trust. It, uh, when people shop in the supermarket they take the brands they know. Uh, the water here it's just because it's a brand you know. Put the water you don't know or that you have never seen. Ooh, people will think it's, it's rubbish. So it, it brings awareness but it's really overpriced in the classic uh, TV advertising world, it's, it's uh, uh, humongous what kind of uh, budgets are uh, spent there. Um, but I know that when you, yeah, when, you, um, when you see an advertising in the 90s, it was a part of a TV experience. It was a day when uh, you couldn't fast forward, so you needed to, to take it in. And it was a time where you, where you talked about the advertising and it was a part of the TV world. But now with the, the change in technology and the, the change in what we want and what brands do, it's a time to, to, to shift and it's time to, yeah, with technology, it's time to go uh, a little further. And yeah, when you see what brands do on social media, because they know classic advertising, it doesn't work anymore and it, mm, it doesn't bring the, re the right value, they go to social media, of course, and they say, ah, we're going to start an Instagram page, we're going to start, uh, start a Facebook page. And what do they do? They just show up. They are there, uh, they are on social media, so check. Um, and what they do, they, 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 I don't understand, but they're still in the mindset of we need to create advertisings and like Dom Perignon, it's a quite big brand, I guess. And their, their Instagram page, they have 28 million followers, 28 million. And all they do is, look at this, it's 12 pictures. It's 12 pictures of, of bottles. <laughs> it's just showing up and it's 12 pictures of bottles and, and in, a, in a way, it, it doesn't work anymore. And here Louis Vuitton, also a whole bunch of followers. And the only thing they do, they show up and they take their classic advertising because that was probably just their, their advertising like ever. Uh, and they, they just post the same advertising, but the shots of the advertising, and we use the same shots and we do it differently. But they, they do the same thing. And then you can say, oh yeah, but they had uh, 252 uh, comments and, and, and uh, a replies, that's, that's good. But you should see they have 26.8 uh, million followers. If you divide 252 by uh, 26 million, you have, uh, I've, I've done it, but it was 0.0000001% of the people replying. So it means that they don't care. And of course they don't care because you see it's advertising. And if it, there's something we don't like, it's advertising because we want to fast forward it. So when we see it on our uh, social media accounts, we want to be entertained, we want to be relaxed. We want to enjoy and we see advertising, we like quickly because we hope uh, people liking that uh, ad, uh, a post of Louis Vuitton, they always think when you like you do this but tomorrow you want, you want something in the bag and you think maybe Louis Vuitton will give you a bag one day but that's not the truth. And, uh, and in fact that's exactly the, the, the billboard, it's the exact uh, frame for the magazine, it's the exact same picture they use in a magazine on the billboard on a TV commercial. 
Ah, we put it there too, and the brand manager and marketing manager is, is so happy because you know what? We have a great 360 degrees marketing mix. We have put it on billboards, on magazines, on social media, and they put it everywhere on the same thing, the same crap, on the same thing. Here you can even see the text. Uh, Attra Breve, the newest edition of the Louis Vuitton family, now available in stores and online. Is that advertising? Yep, that's 100% just pushing you and uh, telling you to, to buy. And that's not what we want, uh, because even event profs, if you search for the hashtag, you can do that, you can search on hashtags and see what people do. The most popular uh, messages are also pff, uh, a bit pushy, so we need to, uh, to, um, to adapt ourselves in, in that way too. And what do people want on social media? Then you need to be really empathetic. You need to go back to your college times when you had psychology, and you need to go and, and see how people are when you are on social media or when you're on your mobile device, you're there for three reasons on your mobile device. You're there to work, your email, your agenda. You're there to connect all your uh, WhatsApp and, and uh, Messenger and blah, blah, blah. And you're there to be entertained because whew, you search for a little moment of being chilled. And uh, those are the three only things you can do. So if you are on, on, uh, yeah, on, on social media, People don't want to be interrupted, people don't want to see advertising just like they don't want to see it on TV, just like they don't want to see it in a magazine or, or they see it, but we are in a, in a way, we are immune because people are adaptive animals. Uh, we want to, to we adapt quickly and in the 90s you could advertise on us and you could sell on us via an advertising. But now, you s even if you see an advertising, you smile, but you know, pff, uh, it won't work because it's an advertising, you're trying to sell on me, you skip and if you see it on social media, whew, you scroll, and that's why brands struggle so hard for attention on social media. It's because they interrupt the entertainment time on social media. And that's where I want to come to see that, according to me, we're in, in a total age of, end of total advertising. Not of advertising in general, but in advertising in the way we do it now. It is putting out images or content or things that make us sell or things that are classic advertising uh, content. And uh, for example, maybe, um, I think brands need to adapt, of course, uh, to a new reality. But for example, you have, uh, I don't know, some of you might have Netflix. Um, and uh, the great thing about Netflix is that you can go all in on, uh, on entertainment. It's, uh, it's uh, from the beginning, you, you don't even need to, to go to the second episode. You just watch, it can binge watch all the time. That's great. But you, you have such a headache and, and before you know it, it's four o'clock in the morning. But the, the, one of the biggest successes for Netflix is that there's no advertising. And through two or three weeks ago, there was a message by Netflix that they, s they consider and they would like to enter some, some advertising, they would like to uh, get advertisers into their platform. And there was World War, it was World War III uh, coming out. All the users were... But probably you will have uh, an age where you have free Netflix for without advertising and a bit expen more expensive without advertising, but I'm sure all of you will pay to get no advertising because we just hate it. So I think we're entering a new era. And then you say, yeah, it's all good to say what we can do or what we can do, but who can tell you what to do? <laughs> and I will try to tell you what I would do or our, what I would like to do. It is uh, the concept of social TV. And the concept of social TV is about stopping to interrupt what uh, people are interested in. So stop interrupting the entertainment, but start to be what people are interested in. And that's a whole mind shift that you really need to do for yourself and for uh, your customers, because um, you need to think like a media company. Uh, you might have heard that elsewhere before, but brands, uh, you need to think like a media company. What is a media company? There are all these kinds of things. Um, it's Eurosport, it's CNN, it's Atlas News, it's L'Equipe, it's TF1. These are, uh, they put out content, but they don't advertise themselves, but it's all big brands. Who thinks all these things are big brands? They're all major ones. But never do they uh, talk about themselves. They only, BBC, puts on show after show, show after show, show after show, and they're a big brand. And that's, I think, a good way to, to, uh, yeah, to, to be as a brand on, on social media, that is to think like a media company and to create entertaining, uh, entertaining content for your social medium. And I think you need to connect. I think you need to entertain, but not to interrupt that entertainment. I think you need, uh, you need to be a part of that entertainment. And to be more specific, uh, you need to know your business. You need to know what your business is about. You need to know um, what, what you do with your brand and what, uh, what people you want to uh, uh, achieve and what people you want to reach with your story. And you need to create content around your brand and not about your brand. You can create 
uh, uh, I will come with examples later, eh? uh, but you need to create around your brand. You will understand later what I mean with that. But uh, uh, yeah, well, around your brand. <laughs> but ah, the uh, uh, very important one uh, is uh, that social media platforms are like bars and it, it will help you to understand a little bit how to behave on social media because a lot of you say, what's the purpose of, of that social medium or what's the purpose of that social medium or why am I on that social medium? And, uh, if they are already on social media and they have four or five social media, uh, different social media, what do brands do? Like Louis Vuitton, they put out that one piece of content and they do it five times the same on Twitter, on LinkedIn. They, they flip it and they go. But you need to think like how you are in the bar. I, th I suppose most of you, you like to go to a bar uh, from time to time and to have a drink. And you have, uh, there you have all the, say, all the things you need, all the elements, all the ingredients you need to uh, behave on social media. You have, the, you have these on a bar. First of all, you have to know that all bars are different. You behave totally different in, in a, totally differently in the sports bar when, you, when the football is finished. And you go to the bar and say, hey guys, we have three beers. And you have different clothes and you have, different, uh, you have a different voice <laughs> as a man. And you speak differently and speak differently to your, to your boys. That's how you behave in a sports bar. But when you enter in a five-star uh, hotel in London and you enter the bar, you're dressed differently and you want to say, hey, hey, you have three beers, you will say, I want a, a two vodka martini and you are very gentle and you have a total different behavior. But when you do the same behavior, and that's exactly what people do on social media, they have the same behavior, everyone does. That's like you order a two vodka martinis in the sports bar of your favorite football club, you will get punched in the, in the mouth before you know it. So you need to adapt to the bar you are in. LinkedIn is a totally different uh, platform than Instagram and Instagram is a totally different uh, platform than Twitter. And how do you know uh, how to use which, uh, which social platform, because hey, it's complicated. The first thing you need to do is take your time, don't post right away, but take your time and watch people who are successful and see what they do. And you will see on Twitter, it's a lot about, chit, uh, a lot about quick chattering. And Instagram, it's a lot about beautiful images, connecting, using the right hashtags and being a totally, it's a totally different uh, approach. And on LinkedIn, you use social, uh, you use a kind of a business contact and you're there to network and it's like being on a VOGA Congress or on, uh, or here, for example. So you need to behave totally differently. And also in a bar, you must know who is popular in a bar and who is not popular, popular in a bar. Uh, no one likes the ones who never talk. Uh, there are a lot of people who never talk and who say, so it won't work. No one likes the ones who just like. That's like uh, a lot of people and a lot of brands just like posts of others. They don't post themselves. They just like, like, like. And that's like the one at the bar sitting there. <laughs> that's true, yeah, that's true. But it's like uh, the, the moron of the gang, so no, that won't work either. And no one likes the ones talking only about themselves. And say, hey, hey, do you know uh, it's a discount? Can you imagine entering in a, bar, in a bar and saying, like here, like Louis Vuitton here? Uh, you know what? Now it's available uh, online and on, uh, on, uh, in stores. <laughs> you, will, you will be cocked, uh, kicked out immediately because you're, you're interrupting people in the, in the bar and it, it's exact, exactly the same thing. I can't uh, find a better way of, of comparing social media and bars. It's social, so it means it's, it's not because you don't see the people on the other side of the, of the phone or on, on your thing. It's also people sharing, looking for contact, looking for a totally different kind of approach. And uh, you're, uh, it will be very handy for yourself if you keep that in mind, um, that, that bars are totally different. So people like people who sometimes come up with something interesting, who tell, who tell a, an interesting story, not exactly about themselves, but about something in the world. And people say, oh, yeah, that's true. And then sometimes you listen and you're really empathetic and you say, oh, damn, maybe you can go to there or maybe you should go to the pharmacy or maybe you should... Ah, I can recommend you a great bar in, in New York if you go to New York. And that's social media, just the same thing as you do in a bar. So, and now, what is social, me uh, what is social TV? Uh, well, social uh, TV uh, is, a, is a kind of a, uh, an idea on which uh, brands create TV-like content. So I believe brands uh, should create content that is TV-worthy, that means when you watch Netflix, you watch Netflix because you want to watch Netflix, because you want to watch that series. And you don't go to the social media page of a brand because you don't want to go to the social media page of a brand. Because if you want that bag, you're going to get that bag, bag of Louis Vuitton and basta. So uh, I think uh, social media, uh, pro, uh, the big brands, they have plenty of money. So they can create their own TV show easily. And, uh, and just to put you in the, in the right mindset, can you imagine BMW today sponsors The Mall? I don't know if someone knows The Mall. It's, it's a very pro popular uh, TV show in, in, in our country and they sponsor it for a lot of money. And sometimes you see a car, it's totally not uh, very subtle. 
you see a car by BMW driving, ooh, and a car by BMW driving. It, it, it's even annoying because you know, ah, oh, damn, they're, they're, oh, they have paid, they have paid to be in the, in the mall. But what, we, what would be very interesting is that the mall would be not anymore on the VRT or on IN or on any other TV channel, but you could only see the mall, bam, on the social media profile of BMW. Will you go and watch? Yep, because everyone likes the mall and everybody will talk, be talking about it. And you can say, yeah, but I don't like watching it on a, uh, on a, on a small screen. <whistles> Flop, it's on the TV. So, hmm, that changes a little bit the perspective. So I think if, if brands really start to create TV-like content, they will start to be really, really, really uh, successful. Uh, and it's uh, a kind of a TV concept that is only seen on your uh, social media platform. Right? So it's not, you cannot see it on TV anymore, you cannot see it anywhere else. It's on your social media platform only. And for example, you can do, uh, Durex could, uh, could uh, take the new Temptation Island, or uh, uh, Colroyd could create a kind of uh, Thuis or Family instead of, uh, instead of uh, posting the new, uh, the new uh, promotions. Of course, you can do both. That's the power of social media. You can do a post every 10 minutes. And if you do weekly, an episode of something, you can do something great, but people like, if, if you like it or not, uh, there are programs I don't like myself, but if you like it or not, those are things that are very successful. People like basic, normal entertainment because work is already hard enough. And if you want, and entertainment is not only fun and, and, and uh, entertainment in the American way. Uh, entertainment can also be, if you're a bank, for example, instead of uh, pushing all the time your newest uh, financial program, you can create every week uh, an interview with the CEO of a, of a top 20 company in Belgium and have a talk. Uh, be, think like not only the TV content, but think also like the Tate or the Financial Times and, and create relevant content that your audience might like. Um, and I will help you on how to get started um, with social TV. First of all, you need to know your brand DNA because there are a lot of marketeers who don't even know their own brand DNA. They, know, they don't know what their brand stands for. They don't know the target groups, but that's the, es the essence because you need to know what your brand stands for, what the values are, what, a, what, a, what it differentiates from other brands. And you need to think about what are the target groups, what age do they have, you need to listen, you need to be very empathetic, and you need to think, okay, they're on that social platform, not on that social platform. The 55-year-old uh, man working in a bank will probably not be on Snapchat, probably more on LinkedIn. So you, you can start already by selecting a kind of a thing, and then you start creating a TV show around your brand, around your business, something that has to do with your business, but that is not directly involved with your, uh, with your brand, but that is around it. Um, that's very important. And you choose your platform. Tuck, 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 tuck. You say, ah, we can do a show for, uh, and we post it on Instagram TV vertical, and afterwards you can see it in a horizontal way on, uh, on YouTube, uh, etc. But the, the, the key part is that you entertain, that you don't interrupt. You need to be a part of the entertainment of social media that people want to be in. You need to be a part of entertainment. That's so crucial, I hope, at the end of the day that you have that in mind, that you entertain and that you don't. Um, interrupt anymore and then of course you will say yeah but where do I sell where do I how do I promote my product well of course it's your page you do whatever you want you're BBC and BBC from time to time whoop, you have a piece of advertising so you can if you if you have 10 episodes of the mall everybody is watching you uh, between in between every episode you make uh, by the way we have a new promotion and you go all in and you try to take care of the 20 80 20 principle you all know it more entertainment than uh, advertising, otherwise you will again lose them all. But from time to time you make an action and you say, if you watch our episode now, you can have a 20% discount and hop, it's going to go very, very hard. So we will go into a couple of cases. Uh, for example, Dom Perignon again, um, to go back to these guys. You see there's Instagram, it's beautiful, eh? uh, we won't say anything else, it's, it's perfectly done, it's perfectly shot. But in the end, I think after 20 posts, you will unfollow them or you will say, yeah, yeah, I don't care anymore because it's every time the same thing, the same bottle, the same bottle. And I don't know, did someone of you didn't know that Dom Perignon was a champagne brand? <laughs> I think you all might have known before. So we will start to take the principles and the framework and we will say, okay, what's Dom Perignon? What does it stand for? Uh, the brand DNA, uh, the, the, the brand Dom Perignon likes to be the, the, the a very exclusive uh, uh, champagne but uh, they, they take uh, only the best grapes and it's only uh, on every couple of years. It's not they put it in a tunnel and they, they put on some chemical, uh, some chemical stuff to, to have every year the same champagne. But Dom Perignon, they say if this year we don't have the right grapes, 
There's no champagne this year. And uh, that's why uh, Dom Perignon thinks, and, and it's, it probably is, uh, they are the best to, to for extreme culinary experiences where you have uh, links with uh, pata negra, with uh, the perfect Italian cheese, with the perfect... Uh, they like to be culinary. They have a whole uh, nightlife part too, but there's a whole culinary, deeply uh, three-star Michelin restaurants uh, that is very important because it's a, it's a whole party. It's God in a, in a glass. So that's the, the brand DNA. The, the target group, probably 40, at least 45 years old, I guess, uh, and, and with a lot of lifestyle, a bit of money, already uh, easy, liking to knowing the world, knowing, uh, being a kind of a settled and, and liking to travel and liking to, to ex uh, explore exclusive things. So then you, you start to think about something around your brand, not about your brand. I will let that <laughs> mingle a little bit in your thing. And then uh, you can choose your platforms because these people probably, you might have a chance on LinkedIn, you might have a chance on Facebook because in the end everybody's on Facebook and you can target really well. Instagram is getting more and more popular so <coughs> We can go on Instagram, everybody's, it's not only young female influencers, it's already getting older and older. So I think in the future you might go uh, on Instagram too. And we will see what other uh, platforms uh, can, be, uh, can be there. But I think you need to entertain and stop showing bottles. So if you know these things about uh, the, the brand DNA, the target groups, who we want to achieve and how we can entertain, we could, for example, just create a 10 episode uh, a lifestyle magazine about the five most exclusive destinations I have, and go with the camera team, go there and, and uh, enjoy the five best uh, uh, hotel, most exclusive uh, uh, hotels in the world. Have a talk with a, a private jet uh, owner and, and uh, do some traveling and just creating a traveling, uh, a traveling magazine, lifestyle experience uh, magazine and just talking about the five best rooftops in the world talking about having a personal chat, Dom Pignon can afford it, to have a personal chat with uh, Adrian Ferra and have a, din uh, a dinner in the restaurant without, that's very important, on your social TV thing, you don't talk about your bread. You don't, uh, as soon as you see a bottle of Dom Pignon then in the image, it's done, it's over, finished. It should be neutral, like you see TV. So you have a talk, it, it should be something very interesting. I think you, you get it in the meanwhile. <laughs> but an exclusive restaurant in Paris uh, and, and inspiring, fun, and the next time uh, that at least the social media account will, will explode and uh, every man or, uh, will have the, all the addresses to take his w wife or his girlfriend or his second girlfriend to go to, to the best places in, uh, in the world. The same with Louis Vuitton, instead of doing this, which we have uh, shown uh, a little before, you can go into Louis Vuitton, the brand DNA, what do they stand for? We don't, won't go into detail because I think I'm running out of time <laughs> already uh, a long time. Um, but um, you can do the same principles, the same, the same uh, thinking work. And even if they started well a, uh, a while ago, they started doing great shots with great inspiring people. Apparently that's something they like. Now social media gives you the possibility to do three days. Uh, Gorbachev is still, is he dead yet? No. He's alive, yeah. Well, three days with Gorbachev on his, on his travel to, to whatever and, and interview him. And the, the human part, things we like to see on TV too. The, the oh yeah, Gorbachev, wow. And uh, he has in some inspiring things to say. And we can... Yeah, all, all of them, I think, no? Zidane too? Pili? I don't know, doesn't matter. But <laughs> who's alive and who's not? But uh, can you imagine how inspiring it would be to have a three days walk with uh, Catherine Deneuve and with, uh, with all these people within the same, because Louis Vuitton can do it, within the same filter, within the same quality of image. And that's, that's amazing. That's a, that would be a great thing to do because you can interview these people personally and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It will certainly be less, way less expensive than the, the TV ads and the, the Vogue ads and the wallpaper ads that they're buying now. Uh, and that have no effect on us because we, we've had it with advertising. But who would like to see uh, a three days? Uh, pff, uh, I would prefer the, the Zidane and the, <laughs> the Maradona, of course, but maybe some of you would like prefer the... But I'm not the, the target group of Louis Vuitton, but never mind. But <laughs> you, I think you understand why this is entertaining and why uh, the ad and, and Zich is not, uh, totally not entertaining. And to go a little uh, a level lower, you can do the same thing with Jupiler. Uh, here again, Instagram, brut, they follow 31 people, okay, we won't say anything about that, but beer, 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 probably, huh? You can imagine the rest of the, <laughs> of the, of the account, and uh, I don't blame them, eh? but again, here we do the same thing, what could be the brand DNA? Ah, rough, tough, uh, pff, uh, male, uh, football, of course it's football, 
uh, it's a, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You start to get to understand the, the the thing. Hup! What do we do every week? We do a TV sh uh, a TV show here, like for example, bam, uh, one, two, a camera. This guy, hup! It doesn't need to cost a lot of money. Bam! And every week you do a live uh, a live uh, moment with Jupiler, and uh, you discuss the moments of uh, last weekend. And the, the the advantage of social media is you can comment and you can ask questions and you can you can pff, so many possibilities and that's so way more entertaining than this, right or not? So now it's up to you. <laughs> I'm sure you all have a, a lot of uh, brands you work for. I'm sure you have a lot of things that uh, might have come for yourself. So stop, um, yeah, inter uh, stop interrupting people in their moment of entertainment, but start entertaining around your business, not about your business. Adapt to, to every uh, relevant platform, adapt to every uh, yeah, platform because every social platform is a bar. Um, and of course, uh, you will say, yeah, but my, uh, my content will not have worked. It's the, the quality of your show that will be uh, important because you watch TV tonight or when you come home, 20 of the, the 25 programs are, are nothing, <laughs> are worth nothing. So. It will be the same thing with brands and, and uh, only the ones succeed, uh, who will succeed will be the ones who are totally not commercial and who have the, the best creative idea. But we are all in the creative business, so we are all event profs and we are all experts in entertaining marketing. So I don't understand why none of us are more active in the social media um, thing because it's all about entertaining, it's not about interrupting and if there's something we can do as the best, it's entertaining. And that's why my final message is that, uh, according to me, uh, the, the, the best social media manager is an event manager because we know how people think, we know the difference because we have worked for uh, farmers, we have worked for uh, butchers, we work for the king, but we work also for bankers, we work for pharmacists. We know all these people, we, have so we know how to work with technical people, we know how to work with caterers, we know how to work with people from a hotel, we know, how to, we know the difference between three-star hotels and five-star hotels. We are emotional intelligent and I think uh, event marketeers uh, should be the best social media marketeers uh, ever. So now it's up to you. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, I hope it was interesting and uh, if there are any questions, uh, shoot, <laughs> but not too hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a question. Your okay. example of Louis Vuitton was quite interesting because it's true that the official Instagram, for example, it's very boring for the advertising. But at the same time, for example, one of the designers of uh, Vuitton, Nicolas Gasquier, uh, he has, I don't know how many million followers. Yeah, and indeed. He's posting every single day. And so it's very interesting how to create this uh, matching thing between the uh, brand, the official one, and also uh, one of the persons who is in, in charge of the. Uh, yeah, indeed. Design. People want reality and human. Uh, and the other yeah. example is still from the fashion because you know, it's the, uh, the house of Barnum. Who, uh, who tried something amazing because uh, he, 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 uh, he changed the image of the, uh, this old fashion house uh, with the guy who's the designer who, uh, who uh, linked everything <coughs> to the social media. So uh, uh, first they, he contacted all the people in the, really in the, uh, the, 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 the best people mm -hmm. in the world to, uh, to, to really go <coughs> the image of one of the brands. So uh, that, that's crazy. Yeah, and it's th so important to, to have it. And they have a lot of success because they don't have any limits. Because now you still have the bright gui uh, brand guidelines, and they have to. Uh, ooh, you have to. You can put the logo there, and can this, you can that, and that person he can do whatever he wants every day again. And the the, the one uh, taking care of the social media account of Louis Vuitton, of Balmain, or whatever, ooh, we can post because maybe Paris will think that. Oh my God, that's so 2017. <laughs> I mean, that was yesterday. Uh, but indeed, yeah, the human, the human, uh, the, human touch. the human touch is so much more important. That that's what we all like. That's why we like Temptation Island. That's why we like Big Brother before. That's why we like all these voyeurism. <laughs> we don't like to admit it, but we, but we love it, and that's why we like to see the stories on Instagram of uh, of some people. Uh, you're totally totally right. Yeah. Let's say you have access to uh, Louis Vuitton or Dom Perignon mm -hmm. uh, Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, you say it's boring, and it is pretty boring. What they post on their uh, Instagram account. Uh, what would you do to actually make it better? Oh, well, do exactly the the social TV concept and and try to start from a. What, would, uh, what, what sort of post would you actually put on Instagram to actually make it more interesting and more? I would start. To people? 
I will start my TV show, uh, start to do, it can also be about lifestyle and about uh, traveling and about everything, but you can do a large episode of 10 minutes or, or half an hour uh, traveling and that's a full video you post, but you can also take the small pictures of the, of the plates and you have every day again, you have a, a, new, a new thing about entertainment, uh, so you can, pick, uh, you can take a large piece of content, but cut it in, in very small little pieces that you can use for all different kinds of, uh, uh, of media. And uh, I think also uh, you don't always need to post. You can also go and search and, and go out and see what other people do because a lot of brands, what they do, they post. It's like again coming in a bar. The social media are like bars. What they do, they come in the bar, they, they yell something and they, they run. They run around of the, of the bar. But while a lot of people start reacting, uh, uh, for example, here, here, for example, they post this, and they post this, for example, and yet a lot of people react on these 252 reactions, because these ones you can buy and, and they buy. But these ones you cannot buy, or not much, and uh, what happens? Louis Vuitton doesn't re reply to any of them. They don't even like them. They don't even... Re they don't You're all... This is everything. That, that, they don't care about you, they hate you. And, and uh, if, they, if there's something they need to do, they should at least follow everyone else, because that's le the least they can do, right? Because, oh, loyalty and customer centricity, is this customer centricity? <laughs> ah, come on. And never reply to anyone, this is coming in the bar, saying, well, hey, uh, we have a new bag, uh, and leaving. And I think instead of always posting, they can also just engage and, and talk and, and have a conversation and say, hey, what do you think? Here you can, I didn't do it here, but that's their messages. You can see the messages tagged by other people. Yeah. These images are way more compelling and cool because people posting pictures about Louis Vuitton, these images are great, are amazing. Never ever Louis Vuitton says a little like, never a thank you, ne nothing. They just don't care about you. And I believe that young people today, they won't accept that in, in they, can, they can afford that themselves now, but I, ca I can't imagine in 10 years that we will accept that anymore, that, that brands, take you for granted. It's like uh, the ugly guy dating a, a very beautiful woman. The beautiful woman can do everything. The supermodel, who she can, uh, she can <laughs> do whatever she wants. But at a certain moment, the ugly guy says, hey, you know what? I've had it with you. I'm gone. But I think the same thing will happen with, with brands who, who, who behave like this. And, and if there's something they can do instead of just posting, uh, engaging, but really caring would be, would be uh, an important one, I guess. I don't know if that was an answer to your question, but... Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so we've seen corporates, and that's uh, quite clear. The world is, of corporates is totally different from, let's say, non-profit associations. And I think we have a couple of associations here, too. So how would you... Uh, would you say that instead of entertaining, they, would, they should produce more in, uh, informative yeah. content? Yeah, I said it in a, at a certain moment. Entertaining is not about... Don't misunderstand, I need to put a term on it, but entertainment is not only hey, ole, 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 it's not only uh, great shows, it's also just uh, putting out information. I, myself, you will see on my social media because you will check and see how I entertain. I don't really entertain, entertain. I know my target group, I have done the brand DNA, I have done the, 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 the homework, and I know hmm, I don't need 10,000 of clients, I can't, <laughs> I can't handle them, I'm all alone, so I need 20 clients, 25 clients a year, and I'm, go and I'm, uh, and I'm ready, so I create Inform, uh, yeah, uh, informative content and things that have to do with marketing and things that have to do with uh, sometimes about event marketing. You can go, my best scoring post wa was uh, about my seven favorite event places in, in Belgium. <laughs> so it went viral, a stupid post, but I thought. But it's, it's easy, snackable, entertaining. And I think you, with any association you need to do this. You, you can go, in uh, as long as it's not about you, as long as it's about things that interest your audience. You need to know your audience, you need to know, uh, you need to do the homework, you need to listen, you need to talk, you need to watch what they're posting, you need to follow them and, and see what they do, where they are, where they go, they, they, they like football, they like gym, they like, uh, everybody likes something, eat food, drinks, uh, binge drinking, I don't know, Netflix, uh, and, and talk about that. And, and, and post and try, that's, that's, the, that's the advantage too. Do and and it will go wrong. Yeah, don't. Never mind. Next and and try, try, try. Do that for a year, and you will see in a year it will be a totally different world. Believe me. So according to me, that that's uh, applicable on any kind of uh, business. Uh, do you have a way uh, well, or any advices on how to engage people when you when you post something uh, in a way 
way that you know they just don't only like and share your content, but actually that they write and for example if you ask a question that they that they react. Yeah. Because I've seen many many communities where I um or communities like this, you know, social mm -hmm. uh, like Facebook groups or something. Uh, where I, I saw that, well, what seems to me was that people were doing like a really great job, you know, like asking questions, like really trying, and like zero, zero response from from anyone, or maybe like you know, twenty likes, but like zero comments, never. So I was, uh, it's really good to see. Like, I know it's not a science. It's like why do certain bars work very well, and why do certain restaurants don't work, and, and it's next to each other. It's human psych psychology. But I think if you start by uh, not uh, being pushy and not asking questions like uh, uh, if, if that would be a question, do you like my new eyebrows? <laughs> you will get probably not much, not, much of, uh, not much of something, but if you think about what would interest the other one and really be empathetic and really think what they would like without being it too commercial, you will get reactions automatically because maybe not on the first post, but maybe on the second post and you will uh, my thing is testing and learning and, 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 and trying out different kind of things. It's not an exact science, but if you start by the other human being on the other side of the phone, you will have a much greater response than when you start by asking for yourself. And people sense we all, have, we all adapt, we are, we are all, all immune to advertising, we are all immune to, to smelly, uh, catchy questions that you know, uh, it's, it's because they want me to engage. People know we are looking for engagement. People know that we are looking for a little reply because that helps them to go up. And if a brand says, oh, do you like my new blah, 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 no, uh, do you? But on the other hand, uh, what was your favorite uh, traveling destination? And we will get you, uh, I don't know, we will, one of you will get you there. Uh, Louis Vuitton can do that, for example. But pff, it's engagement just for the engagement, you know? If you want short-term engagement, you can do, uh, tell me your favorite destination and we will pick one of you, the computer will pick one of you. Uh, tag a friend, choose your favorite destinations, and the both of you will go to that destination. And you get two weeks, <laughs> it will explode, you will have short-term engagement. But that, is that the real engagement? Is sometimes it's better to have three replies of people that really care about their reply and because they reply for you, than that you have a hundred uh, thousand replies because they want to go traveling. It's a, it's a great stunt and you have a lot of uh, engagement officially. But people care too much about numbers and not about the depth of the quality of the relationship. And I think don't focus too much, too much on how many replies did I have, but focus on uh, have I reached one person and that one person replying to me, I'll reply back. And start already by replying to everybody replying on you and, and liking everybody who, who, who likes you and, and just be social and the rest will, will come and don't fo focus too much because the end goal is not engagement, the end goal is doing business and is doing, uh, getting a better network and getting acquainted with uh, certain people and not having 300 because that, did, that doesn't say anything if you have 300 reactions, you score well with your boss but in the end your business doesn't precisely get much better. Yeah, well, uh, the, I, mean, I agree, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. about this, you know, like, communities. Yeah, the same, it's the same. And sometimes it just really blows my mind when I, like, I look at, at them and they just seem to be really dead, like, you know, profoundly dead, like, there's zero... Because they don't dare, they say, because you don't see, uh, uh, I don't know who is out of that world, but you don't see, the. Uh, according to me, it's all the same. You're brands. You need to think yourself as a brand. You're a brand. You're not a community or a, or something dead. I mean, if you think yourself of a brand and be proud of what you do and say, yeah, come on, I, I consider myself uh, as a brand, as a corporate brand, go for it and you will see already a, a big change. But a lot of corporations think they are, think they are below the, the line, but they're not below the line. They're up, up and, and behave like a brand.